Okay, so what else do you guys? Um, one thing that I've noticed in the energy when the moon is in Capricorn and we have a major planet as Capricorn is there is a power struggle. There's a power struggle of realizing what you cannot control and what you need to sit the fuck down and relax. Um, I've noticed that hand in hand in hand, time and time and time again. Okay. Um, it's interesting. It's interesting because of the fact of that. How can I explain this? Like, it's interesting because of the fact of like, you get to see how much power you have in being grounded and that to me is already alarming it's already alarming because it, you know one thing about it two things for sure Capricorn energy gonna make you feel like you need to dictate every little step of the way instead of just following through and just having faith um this also is going to trigger a lot of your um this this transit while we're moving from Capricorn while the moon is still in Capricorn it really is testing your attachment styles. Yeah. I think the adjustment to what God has been doing for people is really teetering like this. It is. It is. And I think that's the part that has a lot of people in a little bit of a shamble because Mercury's still in Virgo. So there's an overthinking that's happening and people feeling like they're alone. And that's why I was saying about how like you need a support system, regardless if it's family, friends, whoever it is, you need a support system right now. Emotional support was a big thing. I didn't say emotionally dumb. I said emotional support. And also there's this thing of realizing like, you know, one thing about me I, I'll say is because I am an evolved Aries, I try not to pop off at the mouth at certain things. But I am a noted type of person. So right now, also some things that are happening is realizations of like, you're not my friend. I don't fuck with you. We don't need to fuck with each other. You don't align with this. Okay. I don't know if everybody's frontal lobe is doing something, but there's also, I don't even think it's frontal lobe specifically. I think it's third eye. The third eye is the, is the, is the chakra that has to do with envisioning things intuition um i love how the third eye it like the, the chakras actually go up so it's like one through seven i love how it's six so it's this 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 dynamic between light and dark and the light and dark right now what's happening what's happening with the third chakra is is having you guys figure out what needs to be addressed and what needs to be like, you know, kind of like a, a noted thing. There are one or two things that are happening. And so one thing about the noted thing, the noted thing is going to be where you put up boundaries. When you when you note something, you're like, oh, okay. Like, I got that. Like, it ain't really too much to discuss. It's a noted thing. It's for you to implement boundaries. It's for you to move accordingly. This energy, it's not slick, it's not sly, it's real. It's real shit. Are you going to throw away everything? Like, one thing I'm learning about this energy is the fact of that. If it's not in your way, then you already want to throw it away. And I have a bad habit of that. If it's not my way, baby. And one thing I'm noticing about this energy is the fact of that. Before this south node transits into the south node of Virgo, you're going to have to learn... That the scale, spiritual in, spiritual injustice is above you. But notating things based off what you've seen here and felt here, that's all you can control because it allows you to implement boundaries. It does. So until this south note is, I'm telling you, anything that has to do with partnerships, relationships, just anything outside of yourself, you can't just dismiss it. You can't just dismiss it. You can ignore it. You can do whatever you want, but you can't dismiss it. Okay? And so dismissing it and trying to, I guess, how can I put this? Dismissing it and trying to avoid the inevitable is kind of pointless because you can't do it. It's not going away. All these things that have to do with any type of karma injustice are above you. So you're just going to have to continue to go through the lesson. One of the things that I also noticed is the fact that, that with Mars being in Cancer, 
there is an aggressive thing about ancestral feedback. I made a post about that New Orleans song that's going on. And they do it from some type of like Zulu ball or something. It was, it's just a like a song that they put on. And I said, have you ever heard a sound and it sounds familiar or it gives you chills? The power of ancestral, of you being able to get through emotional turmoil or to get through all these attachments, it's happening now. Your karmic lessons are happening in people. I always tell y'all this. This is where you are. This is where you're going. Remember, I told you, you're not going from here to here to here. You're going from here to up, remember? So therefore, all these notations that you're making, all these, all these epiphanies that you're having, I want you to think about it long and hard while you're having these epiphanies about certain things, especially when it comes to the friend dynamic, when it comes to the family, the lover dynamic. I need you to realize this because one thing that Gemini and Jupiter, I mean, Jupiter and Gemini is doing because Sagittarius is normally, um, not normally, Sagittarius is the sister sign of Gemini, is they have a bad habit of perfection on the outside. Virgos have an issue about perfection on the inside. Sagittarius and Gemini have a, a energy of perfection on the outside. That's why Sagittarius are sometimes non-committal because they seek a perfect person. They seek a perfect person. That's that's nine times out of ten why um why Sagittarius and Gemini can be very non-committal because they seek perfection in people. Virgos are more overly critical about what makes a person and all that type of thing. But Sagittarius and Gemini, though, they're normally outside. Pisces will just create the reality that you're perfect in. But, you know, they, but as soon as that, that, perf that perfect energy fades from their reality, like they finally see who you are, the illusion that they kind of have painted, it'd be like, you know, down goes Frazier. So one thing that I'm noticing is that a lot of people are, they're being too hard on other individuals that are going through shit. Remember, this is helping codependency. This is helping attachment styles. That's what the South Carolina Libra is doing. Relationships, harmony, balance. You're not perfect. You will never be perfect. The other person is not a reflection of your trauma. They're a reflection of what you need to heal. People view you, and it's so funny. Somebody said this to me yesterday, right? And I, I had to, it, it just hit me when I heard it. You seem like your life is so put together. I don't want to bring chaos into your life. That's a pedestal. That person has put me on a pedestal because they see that my life is so perfect. And that's their perception of me. So anything that they feel like, you know, they don't feel they can be a certain way because they feel like they won't meet the expectation because my life seems perfect, which is far from the truth. Am I extremely blessed and grateful? Yes. But majority of my issues aren't my reality. They're my emotional state. They're my mental state. And I'm always upfront and honest because of the fact that I battle with being a spiritual being, being being here to teach people to raise their vibration and also having a human experience. And I don't shy away from it at all. I don't shy away from all the lessons that I learn. I just learn my, I try to learn my lessons quickly and move along. I still fuck up. Play still fuck up. You know what I'm saying? I just be now on some shit where I just be peeping like, and I, I, I think my my detachment from the emotion or what I feel from certain things is just non-existent because of the fact of like, it's never that serious. Like it, it, I, I either care or I don't give a fuck. And so once the transition goes from caring to not giving a fuck, then it, I, it no longer is in my, you know, in, it has to be in my face, you know? So when they said it, it made me realize like, damn, I'm grateful that people see my life as being perfect. That means that this is growth. That means that you see my healing. You see my light. You see my love. You see it. You see how God shines favor on me. But God ain't never took his foot off my neck. 
neither have my ancestors. They don't take their foots off my neck. I am in the point where I'm doing a lot of emotional and spiritual healing. And I'm I'm going through emotional and spiritual development. That's why I'm trying to tell you guys, as much whatever position God is about to have you in as we move into this North Node in Pisces, you have to be emotionally strong. I have enough confidence in my emotions to be like, okay, I need help this. I need to express this. This is not that serious. I can talk to myself. Literally, I had to have a, a, a talk in the mirror yesterday like, yo, this is it. this is what you said you wanted. You got to put your, you, sometimes you got to put your feet in other people's shoes, even if they don't fit. Then you'll realize how much space you have. I'm a size 10. I put my feet in a size 13. I realize how much actual space. You never realize how big something is until you actually put your body into it. And I hope you understand my analogy because of the fact that that's what God is trying to get everybody to understand. You'll never understand how, how much space it takes to fill up this or how small something is until you put your body or your feet in it. And because we're in the North Node and we're learning our independence to be an individual in the midst of partnerships, you can't lose yourself. You can't say, well, it's a size 13. I'm going to go get my feet surgically bigger so I'll be able to fit it. Why would you do that? Now you're doing all this extra work to be able to fit it until you realize that, you know what? I don't have the mental, emotional capacity to be able to fill this up. Maybe this is not much of my burden and I'm trying to make it fit. It's never going to fit. That's like me trying to squeeze into a size zero. Miss Thickums can't do that. What I'm going to do, cut the fabric, then add more fabric just so it can fit me, or I could just go get my size. So that I want you to put that into perspective when you're thinking about trying to fit in other people's shoes. You, you That's not your size. So how can you take on that? How can you assume this? How can you do that? These are things that I'm learning, like I'm learning. You don't, you're nobody's mother. You're nobody's sister. Like when I say this, I mean, people that you really don't have that relationship with, you are only responsible for you and what you can control. You can't control other people. The reason why other people do the things that they do is because of them. It's not even because of you. So you can't take actions towards you personal, put up boundaries. This is where, if I could be honest with you, this is a test to see how y'all deal with when when soulmates and people of your past lives and your past life positions and things come into the physical. Literally, it's like your dream world comes into the physical. It reminds me of that that download I had about Shark Boy and Lava Girl. And remember, I was like, that song she was like, um, I mean, the song he was like, dream, 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 dream. And it was trying to get Max to dream to change the, the story so it wouldn't be raining so much, but he ended up having a nightmare. So he needed to relax. He needed to feel at peace. He needed to feel safe. And then he dreamed for them a new bike. He And then it got to the point where Max was able to visualize and manifest things that instantly. So he didn't have to be sleep to be able to create this whole dynamic. He didn't have to be in La La Land or be in an escape. Shark Boy and Lava Girl is an exact reflection of what's going on in this lifetime. Because he saw his teacher as evil. Remember, he, he made him a whole villain. And then the teacher was like, I didn't know you saw me like that. Like, what what is that? Sharp born lava girl. She didn't understand her power, her passion. She started to lose her confidence and just felt like she would just destroy everything. But when her time was needed, it was needed. Same with Shark Boy. When his time was needed, it was needed. He could be he could be soft. He could sing. Lava girl couldn't sing. Shark Boy is the one that actually had the voice. This is crazy. That I'm coming up with this fucking this that they're they're helping me visualize like this because this is it. All three of these characters had to come together to save a, a double universe, two dimensions. I want you guys to take that in consideration because that's how it's about to look. So people are not understanding. They're, 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 they're trying to. The issue is the fact of that we're always trying to identify somebody as something. I'm anxious. I'm avoiding. I'm fearful. I'm dismissive. I told you everybody's anxious. Everybody's anxious. They've just suppressed emotions to become avoidant. And then they add in that fearful, that dismissive. All those things basically come from the core thing of anxiety, which comes from confidence. 
You have to speak life into yourself. You have to speak life into the situation. You have to understand that when you when you create the reality of what you want it to be, it will align. But you have to trust that whatever reality you're creating and speaking into yourself can happen. I'm telling you guys, when when soulmates come together, when past life situations happen, you guys are going to be like, I didn't sign up for this shit. And you 110% did in this lifetime. So what I realize is I think a lot of people think that God brings people together in perfection. When in reality, what you create will be perfect. Why do y'all think they always say like, don't be talking about your relationship. Don't don't talk about your relationship with people that are single. Don't talk about being married with somebody that's not married. Don't talk about having money with somebody that don't got no money. Don't don't talk about things with people that don't know because of the fact that they aren't going to be able to help you. And they're not going to be able to tell you it from a from a true dynamic, even if you're talking about spiritual things. You can't talk about spiritual things with people that you're literally ascending here and they're here. Because they're only going to be able to tell you from where they're here. And it's funny because y'all know I don't listen to T.D. Jakes no more. But he had a sermon. And I remember I, I took that part of it and I put it on it. I don't want to talk to a broke person about if they're broke. I don't want to talk to somebody that's not happy about being happy. I don't want to talk to somebody that about not being sick with somebody that's sick. I don't want to do it. So when God is trying to put people together in their imperfection because the fact that what you're going to create is perfection in his eyes. Let me let me be clear when I say that perfection in his eyes, God will make two worlds collide together in a midst of chaos and be like, y'all figure it out. You create harmony. Bonds. And it's so funny. My uh, homegirl literally said she said this generation will be built off real love. Like This generation will actually feel what real love is. This generation. And I told y'all our children. I told you two karmic people. They will come together and I'm telling you, they will build what true love is. And that's exactly what this is. Everybody's like, oh, love is a fairy tale. Love is this. It is. Money's energy. It is. So these things are things that happen in the reality. We have people that have fairy tale loves. We have people that have a whole bunch of money. We have people that have this. But this teeter-totter of the emotional stability, the spiritual stability is really fucking with you. And the last three months is going to be crucial. That's why I said a lot of people, the last three months, their whole life is going to fucking change. And I feel like a lot of people are at that end. They're at that end where they're frustrated, they're irritated. But that's the thing. Frustration is an indication of transformation. These last three months are closing up a very, 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 very tough cycle. It's a cycle that literally you cannot shake, you cannot ignore, you can't do nothing but just go through it. And I feel like so many people are going through it together that they feel like I'd rather be do bad on my own. And I just keep hearing God saying, you ain't even doing bad at all. You got to count your blessings right now. Count your blessings. And see, if you was focusing on still what you need to focus on for yourself to continue to move forward... You wouldn't even be worrying about the, all the things that are hindering you. You wouldn't even be worried about all the things that are causing you chaos. You wouldn't be worried about all the things that you can't control. Because your focus and your energy will be put towards what you're trying to better yourself in. What makes you happy. What makes you, brings you peace. What brings you grace. You should be focusing on that. I'm not saying ignore the feelings that you feel of frustration. But fill them hoes and keep it pushing. Stop coping with alcohol. Stop coping with people. Stop coping with drugs. Stop coping. Stop coping. Let me say it again. Stop coping. Stop coping. Go read a book. Go go post a podcast. Go draw a picture. Go do something. Stop coping. Stop coping. Stop coping. Stop coping. Stop coping. It's a temporary fix that is not going to solve the big problem at the end. You still need to talk about it. You still going to have to deal with it. You still can't go around it. Stop it. Stop it now or forever hold your peace. Okay? Um, and the sun is in Virgo, which is illuminating all that shit. Pisces is... A, the sister sign of, of Virgo is actually Pisces. Virgos might not cope. Virgos might not escape a reality, but they'll cope in one. Stop coping. Let me say it again. Stop coping. Stop coping. Stop coping. Stop coping. Mm 
dream, 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 dream. So, uh, going into it, today's the 13th. Let's talk about a little bit of astrology that's going on. Um, so, so nothing's really happening today um, from what astrology.com is saying. It might be some things that are transiting, but there's nothing really happening today. But tomorrow, let's talk about it. Venus and Libra, trans Jupiter and Gemini. This is where I say, if you have, it says, um, as a two- planets connect today the vibe is social witty and clever if you have your eyes on someone it might be a time to make your move told you keep it pushing gemini energy very flirty but nobody's perfect you know it's so funny i keep hearing that song by hannah montana you get the best of both worlds okay she enjoyed being hannah montana she enjoyed being miley she just couldn't get over the fact of having to hide that she was Hannah Montana and that she was Miley. Stop trying to hide the two from each other. Stop trying to hide the part of you that is, you know, that's stable, that's great, that's honest, and then trying to hide the version. It's like you can't you can't be you can't be open and vulnerable that you're still healing and that you're not perfect. And then you, you bask in the glory that God has you in right now. You can't be in two different worlds. You get the best of both worlds, but you can't stop hiding them. Stop hiding them. Stop hiding them. You can't show love, be perfect, be in love, and then, you know what I'm saying, hide the hurt. Stop hiding them. God is putting people... And things in your path where you can't hide it. You can't hide it. Specifically with people. You can't You can't be, oh, everything's good. I'm blessed and highly favored. And then you're literally on the verge of a crash out. That's why I kept saying, that's why I said in that last video of that emotional support. Mars and Cancer brings people to an point where they're so, they're so aggressively feeling emotions that they just fucking crash out. They either, they push people, what they do the opposite of what they truly want to do because of the fact that they're so over-consumed. There's, there's an overproduce of emotions. People overly are producing a lot of emotions, which is making them cope, which is making them avoid, which is making them anxious. You're overproducing emotions. And it's not a bad thing. And that's what I feel like people are not realizing. They're taking the overproducing of emotions as a warlike threat. When in reality, God has placed people in your path at this very moment to support you through your emotional turmoil. Do y'all not know that that is a, a thing, a south node in Libra? That's a karmic cycle for people to break, to hold all their emotions in and to not say anything and to deal with it alone. Libras do that. They can't they can't weigh out the options. So instead of them actually putting a little bit more here and putting a little bit more there, they rather just hold the weight and just be like, well, it's even now. I don't want to throw off the balance. And then they be fucked up in the game. So um, we got the full moon coming up in Pisces. So, it's so funny. I'm talking about this Pisces energy and it's a lunar eclipse. Honestly, let the things come out. This is what I'm saying. The overproduce of emotions, let it come out. You produce all these emotions to be able to feel so you'll be able to continue going. Once you overproduce emotions and you process the emotions you overproduce, it now puts you in a state of where you are aware and you can take accountability and then you switch it into wisdom. So the fact of that any other time we have this transit or whatever God takes out of your path or whatever he adds to it, you're not over there feeling like you actually have true loss. In reality, everything is working out the way it's supposed to. And I know that sounds crazy because of the fact that we always say that, but I'm telling y'all like... This is an amazing season because the fact that it's in Pisces, meaning that anything that's taken out, you've already learned the lesson. M mentally, physically, spiritually, you've already learned the lesson. So it's just like, it's like, okay, boom. But right now it seems like there's a lot of turmoil. Right now it seems like there's a lot of aggravation and irritation and, and annoyance. It is, it does. 
because of the fact that it's just like this is too chaotic and it's not even chaotic in the physical it's all in my mind it's all in my heart yeah get that shit going because see pisces is also a water sign pisces is also the reflection the reflection of your subconscious mind is happening in the fist in the physical and you should be having these third eye moments of like yeah this is not gonna work you should be able to hear key words and be like So, you know, it, it, it's it's a noted type of thing. The harsh lunar eclipse will take off the rose-colored glasses that we've been wearing all summer. Having us look at the jarring truths of the world, stop ignoring your problems, and finally get to the heart of them, even if it's uncomfortable. Check. On the 18th, Mercury and Virgo opposition Saturn and Pisces. If you want something to manifest, you must put in the work as nothing comes easy today. The good news is that all effort will pay off. Check. Stop coping. Stop coping. Stop coping. On the 19th, um, Sun in Virgo trines Uranus in Taurus. Great time, great time, great time. Love this transit. Why do I say that? It says, this cheerful aspect encourages us to gather our rosebuds and enjoy the lighter side of life. Savor that pumpkin spice today. All this happens on the end of a lunar eclipse. All you guys are feeling this energy build up for a lunar eclipse. You guys are going to get to next week and be like, oh, whoo. Huh. You guys are going to get to Libra season and be like, oh my gosh, this is so great. I feel so much better. Why? Because you let what else was above you be worked out. In Virgo season, it's Mercury energy. God has literally got the angels and the spirit teams at computers. And he's just like, do this and set this up and do this and do this. And then while they're doing all this back work of paperwork and stuff like that and the contracts and things like that, they ha are having you deal with your emotions. They are, because Gemini switch with Virgo. They're having you battle out light and dark. You ain't got shit else to do. Jupiter's in Gemini, so you ain't got shit else to do but expand the way your light and dark side communicate with each other. Why you feel like this. Why you're so this. Why you're so that. You ain't got shit but time. Because everything else around you has already been handled. When you look at your present moment, you realize ain't shit wrong. Ain't shit wrong. You know, so funny. I seen a video of the CEO that owns the the bulletproof things, and he actually got in the car. Um, he actually got in the car to test it, and it's so funny. The caption said, uh, "He basically said, if I'm lying, I'm dying.' That's the type of energy that's happening. You trust in your product so much that you will literally risk your life, and that's exactly what God is saying. You. We have so much trust in you. We have so much trust in the force field that we have in front of you of what's going on. that you can get in that motherfucker and they can shoot whatever they want at you. Pop, 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 pop. But we are taking care of this. Let them shoot their best shot at your ass. Let them shoot at your best shot of your ass. Please. Ain't nothing gonna hit. So focus on something else. And it was so funny that he was in the car. He was getting shot at. Nothing was happening. He walked off and he walked off smooth. Like, yeah. And what? After this lunar eclipse, y'all going to be so like, oh, my God. What was I worried about? Oh, my God. I'm so grateful. Thank you, God. And you're going to go back to normal. So you can't go back to normal after you don't cause all this havoc. When in reality, this is the time for you guys to be communicating. This is the time for you guys to be expressing yourself. This is the time where vulnerability is at the top of the list. And I'm talking about honesty, vulnerability, communication. Like these are the these, these are when God puts the the struggle on relationships so you can see if y'all gonna fold. Um, the sun in uh, Virgo opposition Neptune and Pisces, if you're feeling tired, this is on the 20th. If you're feeling tired, it might be a good idea to stay in bed today as your immune system may not be 100%. Know your limits. Don't try to push yourself. Um, one of the things also that's coming up is that September is a very easy month when it comes to the physical body. Um, you will be allowed to take rest. You will be allowed to do certain things. Um, a lot of things with the gut, of course, drinking water, getting your greens. Um, I just bought these from GNC. They're probiotics, chewies. They actually taste really good, but they have, um, they have a great amount of fiber in them as well. Um, just to try to get that gut going. Um, try to, you know, my biggest thing is just like, don't overindulge with food right now. Um, 
because sometimes when your sacral chakra is overreactive, that's coming from your anxiety. Um, so that could also um, that could also reflect in like your eating habits. So just focus on that. Um, a lot of tension around the neck, the shoulders, and the back. Um, just try to just relax. You know, I know that's better easy said than done. Um, but it, it all is a factor of this, okay? As we close out Virgo season, um, try to just do more things of the gut health a little bit more. Just kind of up it up a little bit. Um, yeah. But there's a need for probiotics for the for the body, okay? Um, yeah, September is a month of ease. It's more emotional than anything. It's more of you understanding your emotions and your mental health and stuff like that and prioritizing it. And once again, I'm going to say this for the hundredth time, stop coping. Stop coping. Stop coping. Stop coping. Stop coping. Stop coping. Please stop coping. It's not working. It's not helping. Um, yeah. So, um, hold on. I'm going to give you guys one more. The sun in Virgo trines Pluto and Capricorn. This empowering aspect gives you the power to ask what you deserve, including a raise, a promotion, a public achievement. Remember, you're the boss. So, it's so funny. I keep hearing that song. I be feeling like the man when I walk through. Watch. After, after Virgo season, y'all can go into Libra season like, you super cool. <laughs> Um, because now we're going into the fall equinox, which is an amazing time. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more in depth later on, but this is the energy. Later.